With the crashing US stock market, the drop in crypto market, and rising interest rate, will Singapore residential property be next? Let's find out. The first thing that we want to talk about, right, is a bottom-up analysis of like what's happening in the Singapore residential market. So the number one thing is to look at a more or less a common project in Singapore itself. So over here, I've picked this project, Eight River Suites. So the reason why I chose this project, right, is more of a of the city fringe project, and there's there's actually like. 843 units in this project itself. So that means it's pretty sizable. So there's pretty sufficient data for our, our analysis. And also, right, this project, right, is a uh, is a uh, the completion date is 2016. So it's actually about uh, six years uh, from 2022. So it's relatively new. So the reason why, right, I've not chosen a very very old project, right, is because when it comes to an old project, some of the units have been refreshed. That means they have been renovated, uh, and some are actually not. And hence, right, the data can be pretty biased uh, in the sense that um, the old the unit that's not been refreshed, right, refresh are definitely a lower renter. But the unit that have been re-renovated to look like it's like brand new, of course, it will fetch a higher renter. So when we put pick a project that's like six years, right, from like TOP, right, it's actually pretty clean data. So let's take at a take a look at the two bedroom unit transactions, uh, the two bedroom renter. So the renter transaction, right, is happening at 3,600, right, for the for this uh, first unit itself, right? And of course, this unit is actually a bigger unit, 800 to 900 square feet, right? So when we look at the small units, it is transacting at 2,850, 3,200, 3,500, and like for 48, 2,008, 3,200 plus, 3,500 plus. So in short, right, we can take the average to be rough about $3,200 for this two bedroom unit. And let's take a look at what has happened one year ago in 2011 May. So when we scroll down, right, and we see 2011 May, right, what we see is that the rental rates is now about uh, 3,000, 2,008, like uh, 2,900 and like 2,850, uh, 3,200, 2,600. So in short, right, I will put the average to be about 2,900 plus, 2,900 over here. And let's take a look, right, at what has happened before COVID. So when we scroll down the data, right, all the way to 2019 November, right, what you can see is that the rental transactions is happening at 2,700, 2,700, 3,000, 2,800, 2,800, 2,650. Roughly, the rental is about 2,700. So what am I trying to say here? What I'm saying, trying to say here is that when you look at before COVID, the rental was 2,007. And during COVID itself in May 2021, right, it has gone up to about 2009 and today it's about 3002. So this is roughly a 20% increase, right, in rent itself. And when we look at this, right, this means that um, the investor will have more cash, right, to pay for money installment. So now we know about the rental rates, right? The other thing we want to talk about is the interest rate that we are going to be facing, right, in the Singapore residential market. So when we look at this data, right, if which is the Sora data, we want to look at both the one month uh, compounded Sora rate and three months uh, compounded Sora rates. So let's take a look at the one month compounded Sora rates. So you, when you look at this uh, June 1st, uh, 2022 um, data, right, the Sora rate is 0.9329. And when you look at like, 20th of June uh, 2022, right, which is also now, the rate has gone down to 0.7699. So is this rate considered high? Yes, when you look at one year ago, in around the same main period, right, the rate is actually about 0.1709. So when you compare like one year ago and now, right, the rate has gone up like maybe about 0.6%. And this is considered a pretty dramatic increase, right? But the thing is, Let's take a look at the Sora rates, right, before COVID itself. So when you look at December 2019, right, on the 2nd December 2019, the Sora rate was 1.1892. So 1.1892, right, as you compare to today's rate of like 0.7699, right, it's, today is actually considered lower than what has happened right before COVID. So let's put all these data together for comparison. So when we look at 2019 December, right, the interest rate for Sora is 1.1892 and the rental is about 2,700. 
However, when compared to today, the interest rate is 0.7699, which is lower compared to 2019, and the rentals have gone up to 23,200. So what does this mean? This means that investors right, right now have better cash flow because of the increased rental and a lower interest rate to pay for today. And because of this, right, my take is that investors are on a better footing now as compared to 2019 and will be able to hold on to the property better. So what about homeowners? Homeowners, right, unfortunately have to pay for a higher interest rate and hence a higher monthly installment now compared to one year ago. And hence, right, consumers will have to have a tightening up of their belts. The income have to go more towards the monthly installments than non-essentials like dining out or like to pay for luxury goods. So in short, right, consumption will have to go down. But homeowners will still be able to afford the properties. The reason being, right, the increase in monthly installment will be roughly about 300 plus for every $1 million uh, in loan. And this is still like palatable. It's, it's, it's unfortunate that it has gone up, but it's still acceptable. So in short, right, my take is that for the Singapore residential market, it will still be resilient. And because of this, property markets will hold strong. I hope you have learned something from this video. I'm Ivan Tai. See you.